Well, uh, Matt Barr, who doing your start check. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. I'm not sure that the Scottish Government would like me to speak in there than that. But here, who, who knows? And Kenny talked about uh, being species champion. That's a, a, a rare privilege. And uh, I was honoured to be asked to be species champion for the Aspen tree, and somewhat surprised to be asked to be species champion for the, the Eurasian beaver. But nonetheless, proud to be that champion for the very obvious links that the Aspen uh, is very fondly regarded by the beaver. I should say that my, my colleague Mark Ruskell, who who's, uh, has done a lot of work with the beaver, um, and I continue to work very closely with him. So, um, the beaver, uh, the beaver um, a lot of people think they know a bit about it, but I, I like the phrase that said, it's one of the greatest architects of the countryside. And that's something I'll return to again. I want to talk about what I understand that the uh, what we're all here for. I'm told there's a diverse mix of beaver stakeholders. You know, a few years ago, I maybe wouldn't have known what a beaver stakeholder is, but there you go. Um, conservationists, ecologists, environmentalists, farmers, foresters, and fishing managers, whatever their opinions on beavers. Uh, and I'm told the overarching aim is to promote dialogue and discussion and thereby increase understanding. And of course, that's key to everything. Because no harm has ever come from discussing anything. It's an unwillingness to discuss and an unwillingness to engage that creates the difference. And I'm sure that people will leave here um, enriched by uh, the exchanges they have by others. And I'm sure we'll all come here with this open domininess we can have. Now, I want to mention the term uh, rewilding in the book. Rewilding, nothing to be afraid of. Now, uh, language is very important. And of course, we all sometimes mean different things by language. I've been rather cautious in its use because um, you'll get a different response if that term is used if you're addressing a National Farmers Union meeting, for instance, than you would if you're addressing a conservationist uh, group. Uh, nonetheless, I would mean the same thing with the both. I think we need to, we need to uh, protect our environment, we need to uh, expand our environment in, in the best possible ways. We also need to understand what people's fears are and how we go about addressing these. Um, now, um, some of the fears are very real, some of them are perceived. So I like some of the, uh, the things that have been done for mitigation, and I'm grateful. I was taken uh, to see a, a, a beaver lodge and indeed wrapped a tree um, with uh, netting to ensure that it wasn't, wouldn't be a uh, um, lodge for the, for the beavers. Um, we spoke fencing is another thing. The use of pipes, and uh, I'm sure others will talk about that, to right make water flow. Um, the use of industry <coughs> fencing and understanding um, how all that interacts with the uh, beaver is very important. I think the beaver mitigation scheme, and I'm sure you can hear a lot about that, and the expert advice that's offered, the equipment, and the monitoring. And monitoring, of course, is key to absolutely everything. Um, and, and, of course, it's important that there is a trial of innovative solutions and new technology. I think it's, uh, my job as a, as a champion is to do the very best to promote. Uh, and uh, I have to say that uh, you know, it would be a remiss of me not to the bear without saying that the use of lethal force should be absolutely a last resort. Translocation is an alternative to uh, lethal uh, uh, control, again, uh, should be uh, prioritised. And a stronger focus on avoiding lethal control during the period when uh, young leader uh, are dependent on the mother. Uh, and of course, that's all about increased monitoring too. Now, some of these things may seem self evident, but I think sometimes it depends on our starting point. Uh, and um, I think we need to maybe do a bit of myth busting. In a previous career, I was a police officer, I was a police dog handler, and, and a German Shepherd as well as a, a Labrador. And <clears throat> German Shepherds were imported at the end of the Second World War into the UK by a gentleman, Lieutenant Colonel Baldwin. And he had been very impressive what he had seen. Uh, Lord Breverbrook, on the other hand, the newspaper editor of the Daily Express, was mighty impressed with anything that was remotely Germanic at that time. <clears throat> so he coined the phrase, the Alsatian wolf dog, that ran stories about how German shepherd dogs would steal babies out of prams and things like that. <laughs> so there is precedent for misrepresentation, serious misrepresentation, and I think what we all want is evidence-led decisions. No harm comes from that. Now I accept that sometimes there will be dispute around the, the, uh, what's termed evidence, but engagement and discussion is the way to address that. And we've seen, with, for instance, with the red pipe, the seagull, um, that um, things are possible that people perhaps wouldn't have thought. But again, and maybe this is not a popular thing to say in some quarters, but some people just enjoy killing things. That's a simple fact. They enjoy killing things. And I have to say, that's something I wrestle with at all. I, I, I just don't get that. Uh, uh, 
I also uh, think people uh, people have very strange uh, notions of what, what constitutes a debate because um, I quite often get asked, are you for or against wind farms, for instance? And I say, well, that's a bit like asking me, are you for or against housing? I like the right things to be in the right places, supported and motivated in the right ways. And I think that's very much the case with Scotland's ally, the Beaver. And of course, the journey starts from very weak places. We, we, we live in a country that was heavily forested a number of, well, a number of centuries ago, and that deforestation. Uh, and I, I, something I got out uh, of, of the book, it said that a red squirrel could once travel from Lockerbie to Lockinburg without ever touching the ground. Now, um, so, when we see it, like the trees for life and the, the red squirrel be introducing the project and 10 sites across the northwest highlands, I, I think that's a very positive step. And I would like to see uh, the, the, the beaver treated in, in that way. And, and the warmth that's generated for the red squirrel, for instance, that's very important. But of course there are tensions, there are tensions and, and that's why it's important that the decisions are taken and that there are evidence. And I commend Mike Russell, Parliamentary College, <coughs> as Environment Secretary, uh, introduced uh, uh, a sanctioned introduction in that bill. They have a family connection in that bill. My, my late father-in-law was a forester there at one time. Indeed, the forest office is now the, the, the visitor centre there. And if you haven't had the opportunity to visit, I thoroughly recommend it. It's, it's excellent. And what, what's very good there is that collaboration is the key. All the, all the people involved coming together to understand what the challenges would be, how they could be mitigated. I have recently been about that tree eaten by the, the weavers falls down over a route used by mountain bikers. Nothing is insurmountable if there's a way. Um, and what I, 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 I would also say is that politicisation of the issues. And fortunately, the Eurasian Weaver isn't a party political issue. And that's very important, because that can certainly skew things. And we see that with issues like um, fishing quotas or the agricultural policy. Uh, we, we live in we're one planet, and we are the dominant species in this planet. And uh, we must have coexistence. So it struck me the benefits of Weaver's Brown, and I'll say these very briefly, because I'm sure you'll know that. Uh, they're not only architects, but of course they're magnificent engineers, and most humans are not magnificent engineers. They must create unique habitats that increase biodiversity, and as we know, increasingly humans create land habitats, uh, diverse of uh, diverse biodiversity. And, uh, and of course we know that research shows that disconnection from nature is linked to mental and physical problems in individuals, increased conflict, violence, and crime in communities. Or put another way, it's good to get out and about and see nature. Um, beavers bring flood control benefits. Uh, human action is increasingly creating problems connected with floods, building and flood plains. Um, beavers improve water quality, and this in a situation where 3 in 10 people worldwide, 2.1 billion people lack access to safe, uh, readily available water at home, and uh, 6 in 10 or 4.5 billion lack safe land sanitation. And that's from uh, the World Health Organization, UNICEF. So what we must do is must repair our, our ecosystems that have been damaged by human activity. And as a species champion, I'll encourage the best practice for mitigating local teams, encourage collaborative working, and seek to improve the wealth of the species, support wildlife tourism. And I'm happy to be the, well, when you're the Green Park, you get a portfolio of this thing. There's only six of us, so I'm also the tourism spokesperson. And of uh, course, that's greatly underestimated sometimes the impact. People don't come to the highlands to rural areas to play slot machines and go and, and like, they come there to understand the countryside and enjoy the south countryside. Um, and of course things must be sustainable. We've seen that for instance uh, if we're going to improve the welfare of the species we need to <coughs> manage that um, unlike the unmanaged of course by hunger for instance. <coughs> Or the situation we've seen with dolphin watching, which of course is commendable, that codes of practice need to be put in place just to I'm making two fingers held up at me for not the first time yet. <laughs> um, um, so, um, and we must explore um, payment for goods. And even Mr. Gold talks about payments for public, uh, public goods. So I think there are opportunities for discussion. It is about the common good. It is about the well-being of a valuable resource. It's about everyone working together to achieve the best outcomes for beavers and peoples. Now, these are some initial thoughts. I, I regret I'm going to be leaving at lunchtime, so I'm going to miss some of the afternoon contributors. But, that's a, a magnificent program we have ahead of you. Please participate and enjoy. Have a very good time.